Today I'm starting my first ever cascade of heat pumps. That's two heat pumps and my first ever Nibi as well. And also we have limited time, only one week to get the job done because people living at this big house are going away for one week and when they come back the heating and hot water has to be working. Can we get it done in a week? Just me and Marie. Let's find out. This is an uh, existing plant room in a rather large utility room. This boiler already does hot water priority on a four pipe setup. Internal diverter valve inside the boiler, two pipes flow and return going to the cylinder, then flow and return going to weather compensated heating. It used to be underfloor heating, uh, mixed underfloor heating for the ground floor, very badly installed, not performing very well and unmix radiators to the first and the second floor because the property is, uh, is very, very big. And part of the work of getting the property ready for the heat pump was fully insulating the ground floor with 100 mil uh, rigid insulation. And we installed new underfloor heating on 100 mil centers on castellated panels and we screeded the floor with 30 mil uh, thick gypsum screed just to give it the highest possible output. So this manifold, we installed it, it's pressurized now. It's just hanging in the air because it will either go here or where the cylinder is. So we've got slightly longer pipe work. There's another manifold in the middle of the property because the area of the ground floor is again huge. I think it's around 150 square meters just on the ground floor. We are on day two of the install. It's Monday, we started on Friday last week. We've got external unit positioned outside and piped in. And in the plant room, ah, we're just starting. So I've got all my pipe work above the uh, floor level. I had to build up the uh, plinth for the cylinder because the manifold originally, I thought it would go on that wall, but now it has to go here. I simply don't have enough space here. The cylinder needs to go by that wall. Marie and Colin are changing rats upstairs already. I think they'll need probably two, three days, three days, let's be fair to them to change the rats in the house. And I've got three days to do the plant room, all the wiring and the fourth day to commission and look for trouble. And this is the uh, controller for the unit. It's tiny, really tiny. So I joke to the client saying, this is your new thermostat, it needs to go on a wall in the kitchen. You can imagine that it didn't go well. Now, in reality, this actually goes in a plant room, but again, that needs to be a gigantic plant room to be able to fit this size of the thing. I'm not sure why it has to be so enormous. And here in the garden, we've got a couple of units, 10 kilowatts supposedly, but they probably go to around eight. One is here hiding behind the corner in the alleyway and the other one is right there on the back. So the client didn't want both units on the back. He wanted at least one hidden away. Same unit as, as the other one. Uh, over there and you can see on the walls that they've insulated all of the ground floor extension it's 100 mil rigid insulation it's polystyrene not PIR polystyrene uh, they've also insulated back additions so uh, probably quarter maybe one third of the property has an amazing standard of insulation it's a uh, new build standard I think U value is going to be well below 0 0.2 on those walls they're also changing all the uh, doors and windows in the kitchen and back addition over me. So quick few words about the property. As you can see, it's a big property, over 300 square meters, over three floors. Originally heat loss was, I think, 24 or 25 kilowatts. So it wasn't even possible to, to run it on uh, two heat pumps or, or close to what you could get away from a two biggest heat pump cascaded. But all that work they've done to the back, to the first floor, 100 mil rigid insulation, changed the windows, draft proofed everything, insulated all the floors, and they dropped the heat loss so we can uh, run it at 16 kilowatts, uh, which is those two small NIBI units. They will run at roughly 7.58 kilowatt, each giving us full coverage, 100% of the heat load of the property. It's day three, Wednesday today, Wednesday morning, and we are halfway through the plant room. Cylinders in place, buffer in place, pipe work going in, and Marie is just opening an open energy monitor. So we're putting monitoring on this kit as well. Let's see if we've got all the fittings. We should be hopefully able to finish all the pipe work today, Wednesday, wiring tomorrow, Thursday. And if nothing goes wrong, this system should be up and running on Friday. 
three days in and this is what we have done almost all pipe work finished client is coming back tomorrow so i think we still have some time tomorrow so if there are no unexpected issues we should have heating. Hot water is already connected, cylinder is already connected, so we can run that on an immersion once it's wired, so that shouldn't take too long. And here, we've got an inline direct electric backup heater, three kilowatts. Uh, total heat loss of the property is around 16, maybe 17 kilowatts, and total output of those units is around 16 or close to 16, so we, we might be on the edge here. And if we are, I've got this peace of mind that we can boost it up a little bit. I have also turned the power on to both units. They not wired for the controls yet. The manual specifically says power them up for about six to eight hours before you wire the controls to warm up the compressor oil. Uh, you're not similar with Mitsubishi. You're not supposed to just just fire them up. So by tomorrow they'll be ready to go. And yeah, we'll leave them on overnight. We have a bit of wiring to do and hopefully we can fire the heat pumps up. The oil and compressor has been, uh, is being warmed up. They were turned on yesterday. So a few hours and we are ready to go. If there are no unexpected problems, we should be able to have both heating and hot water from heat pumps alone. If there are problems, immersion on sitting there, three kilowatt backup that should do the load now because it's, it's relatively warm outside. It's over 10 degrees. Let's see if we can get it done. And right here I have to wire the communication cables for the units. Those units are unusual, the, uh, the power cable is pre-wired on them. So we just connect it to the external switch. It doesn't have to go above the unit. Those are not propane units, not R290s. Those are R32 units. Communication cable, three core going back to the controller that Mario is wiring, another three core going from here to the other unit. And we have to program uh, which unit is number one, which one is number two, so that the controller can control what is called the cascade. So we're cascading two units or running two units together. Uh, so it can control them correctly because only one of them this unit will do hot water and heating and the other one will only do heating you could do it the way that both of them do hot water but then the heating stops so i thought this is a better option to have one unit carry on with hot water while the other one stays on heating i don't think we've had as many cables before on any other job Hello. you guys ready Right, I'm turning it on. Okay. Nothing obvious yet, no leaks here. No. It's been pressurized, some minor leaks, now all fixed. And I also had a message from the client. They are on their way back. So we better get it going soon. Ready? Mm -hmm. You're scared now, aren't you? It's gonna be fine. <laughs> oh, the light, the fuse didn't blow, it's good. The setup's on. It's unresponsive now, or as responsive as uh, iPhone 1, if there was ever iPhone 1. It's just uh, time to call Damo, because... Oh yeah, that always helps to turn it on and on. Oh, doesn't reset it. Let's see uh, if your fingers do it. No. Well, you wired something wrong, haven't you? How can you... How can you wire that wrong? <laughs> we didn't turn the heat pumps outside on. That might be it. Now they are on and that doesn't work now. Well, we'll figure it out, we'll figure it out. So all the pumps are running. Heat pump pumps are running. Oh, you've turned it off? Yeah. Okay, you reset it. Well, let's see what's going on. All heating and hot water production will be paused until configuration is closed. All right, let's set it up. 10 o'clock at night, right? That's renewables for you. The heat pumps weren't running and it seems that was because circulating pumps were reversed, not wired correctly. 
So when the one heat pump only was starting for heating, the pump for the other unit was starting and the unit was stopping. I think that's what it was because we just connected one unit to see what was going on and the wrong pump started. So we have to swap the lives and swap the uh, PWM connections and then fire it again and see if it works. Tony, we only wasted Friday night. So now we've got a correct circulator right there running with the correct heat pump. We have to wait for the green minutes to drop below 60 and if that unit doesn't start then I give up. It's too late. I'll... My wife already will kill me, so I just don't want the client to kill me. They're coming back from holidays with two babies and a cold house. Even if we fire it up, there's no chance this house will be warm by the time they come back. If that heat pump fires, it will be warm by tomorrow though. Maybe. So we stayed till 10 p.m. yesterday on site, didn't manage to get it running. Client came back and stayed in a cold house overnight. Luckily, the builders had some fun heaters. And today morning, client being in IT, came here, updated the software. And guess what? It's running. It was just a software update needed. Temperature running at 30 degrees now. And both units are running. They actually are nice and quiet. They're running quite high output now, bringing the house back to temperature. So we've got 16 kilowatts of power coming from those units, three kilowatts of power from direct electric backup. So we're getting a lot of power going in to quickly bring the uh, property up to temperature. Let's have a look at the other unit and the other unit is running. Yeah, it's running as well, you can hear it. And I was worried those Nibi units would be noisy because the casing is small, there's not much soundproofing on them. But you know what? They are actually very quiet. I think I like those units, apart from this terrible software update that kept us here till 10 at night yesterday and uh, left the client in a cold house. Apart from that, yeah, I'm pretty impressed so far. The plant room's done, pipe works insulated, and I'm using this little device called Thorough Flush to flush the system, clean it. It's basically a mains flush, it's a uh, with a reversible valve and I find it way better than a power flusher because I don't have to use any chemicals. Just clean one radiator one by one, flushing it by changing the uh, direction on this. So you go one way or the other. And if you've got good mains, we've got ex excellent mains here. It just cleans them so well, no need for any chemicals. And the problem with power flushing and chemicals is if you leave any in the system, they make it actually even worse. And the way I'm flashing it, I have left two T's with uh, three quarter of an inch connections for my hoses. And I've isolated both heat pumps, so there's no flow through heat pumps and no flow through buffer. So I've got an isolating valve on the bottom of the buffer. So that, that allows me to flush it through. So this external insulation business is, is, is awful. The worst job on the planet. This system is now on an open energy monitor. We've got uh, monitoring here uh, for each heat pump. So we've got three feet. We get a feet for uh, heat pump number one, that one here that does hot water and heating, heat pump number two that only does heating, and a combined feet that shows us performance of both units and calculates uh, efficiency for both units. Yeah. I'm gonna leave links in the description if you want to track performance of this setup. The benefit of running uh, two heat pumps is uh, the fact that two units are splitting the load of the property. So uh, half of that heat loss can be matched right now just by one unit. And it means that this unit, even in very warm weather, will be running in what's called a steady state. So continuously without cycling too much. So yeah, go to the fits, track that performance and let me know what you think of those setups. And if you've got a cascade yourself, leave a comment, let me know how your cascade is performing. And if it's an open, mon open energy monitor, uh, link me to it and I do apologize for not finding it before. All right, thanks for watching and yeah, see you soon.